Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm here today to film another baby update. It's exciting because we're down to the final countdown, the final stretch. I'm 32 weeks pregnant today. Um, so I technically only have seven weeks left because if you've been watching my previous videos, I am getting induced um, no later than 39 weeks due to some of the complications that I've been having. So I am not going to go to my due date. So I only have seven weeks left, which um, is exciting and scary. I feel like it's going by super fast. I feel like the weeks just go by and I don't even realize it. But I am going to fill you in with some of the symptoms that I have been having. They have changed drastically, but I'm still a little boring. I don't have too much. The one thing that I have noticed that is happening a lot sooner than it did when I was pregnant with my daughter is that I'm having Braxton Hicks contractions a lot sooner. I started getting them around 27 weeks, but it would just come like one Braxton Hicks contraction a day, and now it's it's very constant. I didn't experience that when I, with my first pregnancy until I was about 37 weeks, and I don't know. I have this strange feeling that um, the baby's going to come earlier than expected. I just feel like the baby, like my stomach has dropped. I feel a lot more pressure and because of the Braxton Hicks contractions. I'm just experiencing a lot more um, like labor symptoms, if you will. And another thing that I'm experiencing that I didn't experience till much later with my first is the term lightning crotch. I feel like they should make a better medical term for that. They probably do, but I know that like other moms refer to it as that. And that's pretty much like when you feel like a sharp, sudden pain down there. And it's it's really uncomfortable because you can just be doing anything and it, it will hit you. Um, I know for me, it feels almost like, it, it honestly feels like your baby is crowning like just for like a second and then it stops. So I know that that's like another sign of, of like, like a, like a labor s sign or a symptom um, or that like labor is near and you should be experiencing these things when you're this far along. Your body's trying to get ready to birth a baby. So I am experiencing those and they are not fun at all. <laughs> and it's just really uncomfortable. Another thing that is super uncomfortable that I've never experienced before. Um, and I think that just because Layla was a lot smaller when I was pregnant with her, she just measured like a couple weeks behind. So I never experiencing like the kicking um, in the rib cage area. This pregnancy, um, I just had my appointment two weeks ago and the baby's measuring above average. So that's probably why I think we're having a boy um, or we're just gonna have a bigger girl but I'm experiencing a lot more kicking in my ribs and I can tolerate it for sure. It's not like a big deal, but I just think that's kind of cool that it's something different. And I know that when I was pregnant the first time I would watch videos and it's actually really common. So I just didn't know what to, what to expect. And this time it's like a jolt to the ribs and it like kind of takes my breath away a little bit. It's, it's, it kind of hurts. So <laughs> I, I feel your pain if you're going through it. Um, it's just crazy, like, how different these pregnancies have been. You would think, I'm definitely way more healthy and, um, adamant about, uh, staying active and just, I don't know, living a healthier lifestyle. I was very healthy with Layla, but I didn't really understand too much about health and fitness, if you will. So this time, um, much healthier, but I'm different, I'm experiencing a completely different pregnancy. Um... I even, I'm experiencing back pain, which is weird. I stretch more, I'm obviously more active, but I just think that the baby is bigger and it's also positioned and faced a different way than Layla was. So I think that when the baby kicks and moves and changes position, it, it triggers more towards my back. And that's cool. <laughs> uh, like I said, it was just it just startles me because I don't really have anything to compare it to. So I definitely notice it. Um, more than if I didn't have it and it just scares me a little bit because like I said if you've been following my videos 
I am planning on doing a natural birth again with baby number two. I successfully was able to do that with Layla and it was amazing. Um, but my biggest fear is experiencing back labor. Just because I'm not someone that has any back issues and people in my life that have back problems or back pain, they say it's really uncomfortable and painful just because that's like your foundation. So I'm a little hesitant and scared this time going into uh, labor just because I'm experiencing some back pain now as a symptom. So I'm just trying to relieve that by changing positions, stretching, and just letting it, I guess, go away naturally. So that's my plan as of right now, but that is a scare and a worry of mine. I really don't know what I would do with back labor just because it's something I didn't experience before. I told you that the baby's measuring big. The doctor was completely blown away because she said it's rare that the baby measures exactly um, on point with the weakage. So she was saying that this baby's circumference of the head and the stomach and the length and everything is right on at 32 weeks. Usually it's either slightly ahead or above or below and the baby's measuring um, right at the 32 week mark. The only thing that's that's measuring above is the weight. So the baby is above average for sure. Um, we aren't finding out the gender, so I don't know. It can be a girl easily. It doesn't matter. Just because they weigh more doesn't mean it's a boy. But that's what I'm thinking, and I'm kind of excited. But we didn't get to see um, a profile of the baby's face, so we really don't really like know what the baby looks like right now. So that's a bummer. I do have an appointment on Monday, so hopefully we can get a scan. Um, another thing that happened, it was just yesterday actually, Jericho and I and Layla were able to go to the hospital to take a tour of the maternity ward. So we have two hospitals that we have to kind of go back and forth between because when I was living in our past home, it was closer to the city and a really, really nice hospital. So I picked my OB in the city and they deliver at a hospital that's about an hour and 15 minutes away from me. So then when we moved to our current home, um, just so it was easier for our jobs and commuting, there is a hospital which is like maybe 10 minutes away and it's a great hospital. I They just don't have, um, they don't allow something that I would like to do um, in the hospital. So we went and toured the hospital close to home just because in case of an emergency, if my water were to break or you know, if something happens, it's only 10 minutes away versus an hour and 15 minutes. So we toured that hospital yesterday, and it was kind of a deal breaker because they said that I couldn't film when the baby was actually being delivered. Um, I know to some that's kind of not a deal breaker, or some people don't want to film, but I really would like to this time. I did not film anything um, with my first. And I just think it'd be kind of cool to capture the, the moment. But this hospital does have all my other perks that I would really um, enjoy having. So we do have another hospital tour for our first choice, which is an hour and 15 minutes away. And that appointment is a Saturday. So I will have to fill you in to see if they meet all my needs. <laughs> I sound so high maintenance, but <laughs> it's so true. My birth plan is crazy. When you're going into this plan of having a natural birth, you're a lot more high maintenance, and you should be. It's about you, and you want to have control of the entire environment and, um, like, your surroundings. So, I'll, I'm going to touch base on how to, like, kind of prepare for a natural birth. That's actually going to be my next week's video. I want to give, like, a couple tips on how I'm preparing and what I'm going to do, so stay tuned for that. Um... The worst symptom, I guess, that I'm having, and it's weird because you would think the painful ones would be the worst, but it's not. It's sleep insomnia. I had this so badly with Layla when I was pregnant with her, and it's actually, it was worse with JoJo, but this time, it just kind of sucks because I do have a toddler already, and I want to get as much sleep as I can because I know that I'm going to have lack of sleep with a newborn, but I'm also going to have lack of sleep or at least lack of naps during the day because I have a toddler. So, I don't know. I'm not really worried. I don't really care about having lack of sleep. I just know that it, I don't want to, I don't want it to affect me when the baby's born and I also have to take care of my daughter. Um, so it just, it, it sucks. But I realize that the less I think about not being able to sleep, 
is help, more helpful. Like if I don't stress out about it, if I just kind of go to bed and just see what happens, that's when I sleep better. I recently have just been like staying up and I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. And I like throw a fit and I don't even really give myself a chance to kind of relax. So that's just the only thing that, um, I would say is the worst. Like I don't really complain a lot when I'm pregnant, but that, that, that really does, it's sucky. So, I mean, I'm sure there's other moms out there that are experiencing that because it's a very common symptom. Another thing that's really uncommon, but they say is a possibility in your third trimester, is a suppressed appetite. Um, I realize that I'll eat breakfast in the morning and, like, for lunch, like, maybe four or five hours later, I'm not even hungry. And I think that's just because the position of the baby and how big I'm getting, it, like, pushes on your stomach and makes it so that you aren't hungry and also can make it so that you become constipated. So when you're having a combination of constipation um, and just the enlargement of the, of the baby pushing on your stomach, you really aren't hungry. Um, and that's what's happening in my case. I feel like I'm forcing myself to eat and I do that because I know that I should be eating. And I'm trying to eat fiber-rich foods and, you know, calcium and my vitamins and minerals. But it's hard. Like, I, I realize I have, I've been really relying on my um, prenatal vitamins because I feel like I'm not eating enough. This happened with Layla, but not nowhere near as bad. I could go maybe eight hours without eating. And I, I've only ever done that because of, like, an accident, not even realizing that I, I haven't eaten anything. So, um, hopefully... That, that dies down and I can go back to my normal routine when it comes to food, but that, I mean, that's not fun. So that's probably why my weight gain is not very high. My doctor is like, okay, that's kind of weird. You've gained five pounds, but she also doesn't realize I'm, I started heavier this pregnancy um, because I was in like a transition of a bulking phase to a lean phase with working out and I was trying to put on muscle, so I was eating more. So I weighed about seven pounds heavier this pregnancy starting out than I did before. So if you really subtract this or add the seven pounds on, I am right at the exact amount of weight gain that I was with Layla. So that's probably gonna put me at about a 20 pound total weight gain at the end of this pregnancy. And for me, that's very normal. I'm a very small person. So I'm not really worried about it because my stomach is huge to me. <laughs> I feel like my stomach is big and the baby's healthy and the doctor agrees so we aren't really worried about the weight gain um, it is weird to just see that you only gained five pounds but I know that it's theoretically like more than that so it's okay um, which I'm excited for my very last symptom which is weird but I know it's common is my teeth I know some people will experiencing will experience bleeding gums, and I'm experiencing um, sensitive teeth. So, with my first pregnancy, I don't think I ever took in calcium. I didn't like milk. I didn't like yogurt. I didn't like cheese. Like I never took in calcium, and it's one of the biggest things you need because it's something that your baby is completely feeding on constantly and stripping away from you. As as far as like other other things like protein and all that other things like carbs that's why you need they say to, to eat um around 300 calories more than you're eating now so that you keep some of your um nutrition and all that stuff like all your vitamins and minerals to yourself but anyways this pregnancy i realized that i found a new world of food and i realized i liked um yogurt and cheese and stuff like that so i have been eating that in my diet but recently, I haven't because I haven't been hungry and I just lost, like, an appetite for yogurt. So I was noticing the past three weeks that my teeth have been really sensitive and they would just kind of ache without even drinking anything or chewing on anything. And then I looked back and I'm like, oh, well, I haven't had yogurt and the yogurt I get has is really rich in calcium and I haven't had cheese in like a month. So I'm guessing that's what it is. And I had yogurt this morning for breakfast just to kind of get it back into my diet. And I definitely think that's what it is because I feel better. My teeth don't hurt. I don't know if it could happen that fast, 
But I, I do think that that's something that I've been lacking in my diet because of my suppressed appetite. So if you're experiencing that um, with your teeth, and if you're experiencing higher cavities or in other dental issues, try and eat more calcium. Um, that is if you aren't vegan. So that's my tip for you because I am a very clean person and I brush my teeth two or three times a day for real. Like I'm obsessed with dental hygiene. And after my first pregnancy, I was diagnosed with 15 cavities. And you're talking to someone that never takes in an abundance amount of processed sugars and stuff like that. So I was very shocked and I had went from zero cavities to 15 and I was in the, I was at the dentist like every single week and I recently just finished going there. So um, really watch your calcium intake, watch your sugar intake when you're pregnant because if you're eating a lot of bad food and your calcium's low, you don't have strong enough enamel to fight off any type of bacteria or disease that's going on in your mouth. So heads up, because you don't want to go to the dentist and get drilled. <laughs> but that's everything, actually. My list, I feel like, is getting shorter when it comes to symptoms, but it's also getting more detailed, because this is the, the prime time to experience those labor symptoms and um, other things that aren't really comfortable and a little bit TMI, and that's okay, because that's what my channel is. My channel is to be as realistic as possible, and that's what I'm gonna do. For my birth plan for next week's video, I'm gonna fill you in on some of the details that happened with my first labor and delivery, and what helped me get through the pain and how I managed it. So, um, yeah, check it out and stay tuned for next week's video, and then I will probably do another pregnancy update shortly after that, just because I think things are changing now. Um, definitely experiencing new things. I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in this week. Um, I'm excited. Give this video a thumbs up if you are pregnant and you would like to see more pregnancy updates because my channel has been lacking on the pregnancy updates. I know I need to get down to filming more for you guys. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.